Hello again, everyone. I'm Dr. George Simon, and welcome to another edition of the new Character Matters program, the program where we talk about what I consider to be the defining issue of our time, the character crisis that we have faced for several decades now, and that affects every aspect of our lives. Now, we human beings have always been flawed creatures, and we've always had our character-related problems. In many ways, there's nothing new under the sun. But in some ways, there are definitely some things new. Commonly accepted principles of behavior and personal development that once were more universally enjoyed have eroded over time, especially in a culture steeped with attitudes of entitlement, indulgence, permissiveness, relativism, and a few other uh, variables that affect, in a negative way, our character development. And so I've been talking about the various uh, principles, life lessons that have to be embraced for us to develop well in character and to be able to build strong relationships and healthy communities. And toward that end, I have written um, my latest book, Essentials for the Journey, Embracing and Living the Ten Commandments of Character, as I call them, Proven Timeless Principles for a Psychologically Healthy, Well-Balanced Life and a Spiritually Rich Life, Fulfilling Life. Spiritual health, mental health, emotional health, all these aspects of psychological health go together. And there are certain principles that we have to take to heart and live out in order to be all that we can be. And our social problems will not be solved through power, coercion, punishment, restrictions on freedom. Our social problems will only be solved with changes of heart, one heart at a time. And these are the principles that I espouse in Essentials for the Journey. In my other books, I introduced some concepts about the state of things and how we got to where we are, and especially how things got to be the way they are within most relationships these days. And today I want to talk a little bit more uh, about a subject that I address in my most recent blog post on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com. And that's the topic of what has commonly been referred to these days as gaslighting. We didn't have a name for this crazy making effect when I first wrote about it back in 1995, doing workshops across the country and handing out manuals uh, and what would become my first book in sheep's clothing uh, at these workshops, I explained to attendees the crazy making uh, effect that some individuals had on fairly decent folks in their relationships. They might be in a relationship with someone who they just knew there was something not quite right with. There was something about the way they acted, something in their behavior that struck them the wrong way, that they knew was not good. Uh, at least they felt that way in their gut. They felt in their gut was just not reflective of good character. And they also sensed in their gut that this person was merely trying to get the better of them. But for various reasons, they doubted their gut hunch about things. They would feel victimized, and yet somehow the victimizer would make them feel like the oppressor. They would feel in their gut that the person was just trying to get the better of them, and yet somehow that person made them feel like they just didn't understand. They ended up feeling crazy. 
They doubted their gut hunches. They thought, well, maybe I have it all wrong. And this is how they became entrapped in an abusive, manipulative relationship. I saw many such folks in my clinical practice over the years, and they taught me a whole lot about the various behaviors that can induce what is now commonly called the gaslighting effect, those crazy making behaviors. And in my first book in sheep's clothing, I believe that the biggest reason it became an international bestseller almost overnight was that in explaining this effect and explaining precisely how the various tactics that manipulative people use to induce the gaslighting effect, in explaining that, a certain amount of peace and understanding, a resolve of cognitive dissonance occurred. The light bulb went off. Validation occurred. All of a sudden, folks who had felt crazy in their dealings with these manipulative folks understood that they weren't crazy at all, that their gut was right the entire time that they were in a relationship with someone determined to win, but to look good while doing it, determined to get the better of them and exploit them and even abuse them while still maintaining a degree of civility and charm, or at least appearing so. In short, they weren't of the character that they purported to be. Now, it should be said that some traditional notions coming out of popular psychology and even formal research-based psychology have put people at a disadvantage in the past because of some of the erroneous notions promoted. For example, most folks were led to believe that when someone rationalizes for a behavior that they are primarily trying to assuage their conscience, they are unconsciously defending themselves against anxiety. But rationalization in the interpersonal sense is much more of a tactic. It's basically excuse making. And when you're in a manipulative, exploitative, abusive relationship and someone does something they know full well, that they know consciously full well, most people would disapprove of or think ill of when they're engaging in behavior that they know most people would think is wrong and yet they make an excuse for it what they're basically trying to do is not only justify their stance but get you to put, to capitulate and also they're red flagging for you the fact that they will likely do it again in a similar circumstance. This is not unconscious. It's not a defense. It's what I call in my book in sheep's clothing, an offensive power tactic, one designed to get you to back down and one designed for them to justify their behavior and to prepare you for the fact they're likely to do it again. And that's how you know you're in a relationship with someone who's got a lot of character growing to do. And that's why it's so important not to be swayed by any of the tactics that disturbed characters might use with you. All of these tactics I call also responsibility avoidance behaviors because so long as the disturbed character is using them, so long as they're rationalizing for inappropriate behavior, so long as they're blaming the real victim, playing the victim role themselves, so long as they are minimizing the seriousness of their behavior and engaging in all the other tactics that I describe in my books, 
So long as they're doing those things, as opposed to honestly recognizing and dealing with and especially correcting their character mistakes, so long as they're doing that, they will not grow up. They will not grow in character. And your relationship with them will continue to be a nightmare. And in realizing that, everything changed. And most especially because in my uh, book, In Sheep's Clothing, I outlined not only the tactics that are used to induce these, uh, the gaslighting effect, but I also outlined just how to respond in these situations in a way that empowers as opposed to allowing the person using the tactics to manipulate and exploit you and abuse you within a relationship. These tools of empowerment that I talk about in In Sheep's Clothing have been, uh, according to the feedback that I've gotten, the salvation of many relationships with character-disturbed people. Now, it should be said, once again, that character disturbance exists along a spectrum. This is something that a lot of the current authors and talking heads on the subject, especially on the subject of narcissism, don't speak to very much, and that, frankly, don't have it quite right. There are no nice, neat, little tidy categories for disturbed characters. Character disturbance exists along a continuum, along spectra of both type and severity. There are various degrees and types of character disturbances, some less toxic than others, some more serious than others. And so, Although you may be in a relationship with someone who's got a lot of character growing to do, you don't necessarily have to brand them as folks who are so toxically disturbed that there is no hope. And how to tell the difference between those truly hopeless situations, at least by today's intervention standards, and those situations where there is some degree of hope is the reason that I wrote my book, How Did We End Up Here? So you can find those answers there. But suffice it to say that the antidote to what has been commonly referred to as the gaslighting effect, the antidote to that is in the tools of personal empowerment that I describe in It Sheep's Clothing. It's understanding what's really going on in a manipulative and an abusive relationship. Certain character types just want to win. They want to be dominant within the relationship. They want to have their way. And they use various, sometimes subtle, tactics to achieve those ends. It's up to you to recognize what they're doing and how they're doing it, including those subtle little tactics that can make you feel crazy including playing the victim, rationalizing for behavior they know full well is wrong but want to convince you is okay, including uh, blaming you basically for what they themselves are guilty of, inviting you to feel like you've got it all wrong and that you're crazy for thinking otherwise when you know in your heart that you're dead right, and they do too. And how to meet them on level ground. Perhaps the two most important achievements I've made in my professional career are number one, helping folks understand the nature of abusive, manipulative, exploitative relationships and how to empower themselves in overcoming the gaslight effect. And the number two achievement that I pray I have made in my professional career is what we have to do to make character matter again enough that we strengthen our relationships, that we begin to mend our deep social divisions, 
political divisions, and build strong communities, more loving communities, more prosperous communities, genuinely prosperous communities, communities in which all thrive and where the threats to our overall well-being from those among us who are so seriously broken and disturbed that they pose a great and imminent danger to us all are fewer in number. So toward those ends, I'm going to keep working and keep talking. Uh, and uh, after I get back from a brief uh, period on the road, I'll have an announcement for you about an upcoming live edition of this program, Character Matters. In the meantime, I invite you to visit my blog for the hundreds of free articles at drgeorgesimon.com and to avail yourself of my books, all of which are available uh, on Amazon uh, in mul and many in multiple formats, In Sheep's Clothing, Character Disturbance, How Did We End Up Here, the Judas Syndrome, and my latest offering, Essentials for the Journey. And by the way, for those of you who have been requesting it, uh, development is underway for the uh, audiobook of Essentials for the Journey. So I'll have further announcements about that down the road. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dr. George Simon. Until next time, take care.